Hey there, welcome to another day and another opportunity to share an encouraging word. My name is Dave and I'm from lovely Killarney, Manitoba. I think it's above zero today and uh, we're enjoying this beautiful day and uh, so good uh, that you have joined us. We're really glad and trust that this will be a benefit to you. I know it takes time out of your day and uh, but we want to be an encouragement. So thank you so much for watching. God bless you. And uh, uh, thank you for hitting share, letting other people see this as well. You know, this week we are talking about how to be the church. You know, we can't go to church right now, but we can still be the church. Nothing has stopped us from being the church. And we want to be the church. And this week we've been giving some ideas every day on how to be the church even when you can't go to church. We've talked about starting a book club where you can connect with people. We've talked about phoning people. We've talked about encouraging people, making little videos, doing the whole, you know, FaceTime thing and connecting with people, not just with your family, but with other people in the church. Well, today I want to talk about something that's very low tech. You know, most of what the church is presently going through, the Christian church, um, we've, as, as happened before, we've, we've seen it all before, uh, perhaps even to a greater measure. You know, churches have been closed, shuttered, torn down. Pastors have been fined, imprisoned. Um, it's all happened in the past. It's happening right now, certainly in some countries like uh, China and North Korea and other, uh, other countries as well. But the church doesn't fight the government. The church just keeps being the church of Jesus Christ. And even when our habits and our rituals are not what we were used to, we can still be the church. In Acts chapter 8, the Bible says great persecution broke out against the church. They didn't start protests. They didn't start petitions. They just were scattered. And it says, and this is what it says in Acts chapter 8, those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. They preached, they prayed, they um, believed God for healing, they cast out demons, um, they saw incredible things taking place. They were the church even when they could not go to church. And that's what God's calling us to be during this time of COVID. Um, our rituals are being broken. We can't necessarily go to church at the accepted church hour. But instead of railing against the government and railing against the authorities, we can still be the church. Nobody is stopping us from being the church. Here's a low-tech way of being the church. We read it in Acts chapter 9, just the exact chapter, one chapter after great persecution breaks out against the church. This is what we read starting in verse 36. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name was Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became sick and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come back at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. This Tabitha or Dorcas was a Christian who was always doing good and helping the poor. She used her talents and her skills to make clothes for people. And she was greatly loved by the people. Listen, I want you to think about this. She was so loved by the people that when she died, they decided we need to find somebody who can raise the dead. We want her still with us. I hope our lives are lived in such a way that when we die, people say, man, I wish I could have them around for another year or two. That's what happened with Dorcas. And uh, they went and found Peter. Uh, another way that we, you and I can be the church is to use our skills, our abilities, to do things for other people, to help the less fortunate, to uh, buy things, to cheer people up uh, with thoughtful gifts. Maybe it's baking, maybe cooking a meal. You know, years ago in Yellowknife, Northwest Territories, there was an old pastor by the name of Gordon Bailey. Uh, pastor Bailey, um, I never heard him preach a sermon. I never attended a service. Uh, I don't think he ever wrote a book. Um, I never attended a service that he led, but him and his wife would open their homes to the less fortunate. People would come in and sleep on their floor. They would offer them meals. Um, 
they touched the lives of a lot of people. Now, I pastored hundreds of miles away from Yellowknife. But over the years, I had numerous people come to me and say, you know, years ago, they spent a night in Pastor Bailey's house. Uh, I never heard uh, his sermons. I never uh, attended a service. But man, I saw the fruit of his ministry that lasted, and it was fruit that lasted. Uh, Good, long-lasting fruit that touched lives. Listen, uh, COVID has not restricted ministry in any way whatsoever. Uh, It has challenged us to change the way we think about ministry. Um, On Sunday, somebody stopped over at our house with um, some muffins and a card. And it so lifted our spirits just to know that somebody was thinking about us. You know, you can do the same thing. Um, And if you can't bake the bakery's open. <laughs> you can go buy stuff. You can buy a gift card. Uh, we can do things to let people know. Buy some flowers. Do something to let people know that you're connecting with them and you haven't forgotten them. We can still be the church. You know, um, criticizing the government and criticizing people who are trying to follow the guidelines is not the church. That's the flesh. The Spirit doesn't work that way. The Spirit actually does something positive and ministers life. And you have a chance to minister life. I have a chance to minister life uh, to those around us. And so I want to encourage you to do that today. Find someone. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Who is God telling you to reach out to today in some practical way? You do not have to know Facebook. You don't have to know Zoom. You don't have to know how your camera works. All you have to do is go and do something nice for somebody else. And God will bless you for it. They will be blessed uh, because of it. Uh, Let's pray. Father, I pray again that you would open our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church today. Right now, we can't do the things that we used to do, but your Spirit is still working, still working in our lives, and you can use us to be the church. So, Father, forgive us for constantly reminding one another that we can't go to church. And God, may we remind one another that we can be the church. And that's what you've called us to be. So help us to be the church. Help us to touch lives with the glorious truth of your love and of your grace. And I pray, God, that uh, people will be encouraged and people will be lifted up by the way we deal with people today, the way we talk to people, the way we encourage people today. So may your blessing rest on each one that watches today. Bless them and use them. And Lord, grant them favor as they share your love with other people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, thank you so much for watching. I pray God's blessing upon you. God willing, we'll be back tomorrow with another encouraging word. And uh, uh, we just want to encourage you to go and be the church. Have fun.